did the debate have on the Democratic presidential primary? We are diving into the latest polling on that. Team Rising is here to break it all down. Will Jawando is a Democratic strategist, council member at large in Montgomery County, Maryland, and Johnny Burka, executive director at the American Conservative Magazine. Two great friends of the show. Great Good to see you guys. guys. Happy Thanks Friday. Yes, yeah, so, absolutely. So we got some interesting new polling back. Crystal was talking about a little bit earlier. I'm not sure if you saw. Basically, uh, polls on Bernie's side in the uh, Warren Warren spat. We see that I think we have the Democratic primary polling from Ipsos Reuters shows Bernie up plus three. This is a post debate poll. Biden at plus four and Warren at 12. So Bernie obviously in a tight lead there, which is what? What you're looking at here is a new New Hampshire poll yeah, right also point. shows Sanders leading the way. Um, and the other one, though, was conducted wholly after the debate, completely after the debate. Right. And it shows Sanders rising and Warren um, down at 12. Yeah. So there you go. Johnny, I'm so stunned the pundits were wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It. This is what you brought up earlier. Uh, for some reason, her advisors are playing to the pundits instead of playing to the voters mm -hmm. and the, the American people. And uh, as, you've, as you've brought up before, it's really the class issues and the policy proposals that Elizabeth Warren has been putting forward that gain the most traction. And whenever she plays the identity politics game, the DNA test, uh, the sexist uh, accusation towards Bernie, it's a total flop. And I don't really understand why she'd want to flop right before the Iowa. This is a strange thing, right? Caucus. Well, she keeps tripling down on it. I mean, she, you think she would have learned her lesson after the Medicare for All kind of debacle. Mm -hmm. But if anything, she's just accelerated it with the, uh, with, you know, the immigration comments, making fun of people who don't believe in gay marriage. I mean, so so much of it is just seems to be like a, a double down on the, the media class rather than actually trying to win voters. What do you think about all this? Well, you know, it's, yeah. you get into these things with campaigns, you know, it's kind of like tripping. You trip and then you trip again and then you trip mm. again. And so I think she's in, she's in one of those moments and then you double down because you think it's right. And, um, so and it's a horrible time for that to be happening for yeah, her, right, you right. know a couple of weeks before I but I mean I I don't know if we're going to talk about this later but that poll to me the scary thing is Bloomberg Really? Uh, oh, you know, yeah, 9%. And, 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 you throw that tweet back up there, yeah. Reuters Ipsos. And yeah, he's, he's beating Pete. He's beating Pete. I mean, I don't, I don't Right, which you don't yeah. mind. But, <laughs> but, I mean, I think he's his strategy of waiting in the wings and spending this ungodly amount of money, uh, you know, it's connected to Warren in a way, too, because if Sanders, you know, he's going to – he's been kind of steady at that, you know, 19, 20 percent. He's doing well mm -hmm. in New Hampshire and Iowa. But can he – get out of that and do well on Super Tuesday, the question yeah. remains to be seen. And then who, then who do they go to if Biden has been weakened? So it's I think just you're a, right. We'll, we'll keep, save a little bit of that. We I, have mean, that I, keep, I keep saying that, though. Don't underestimate Bloomberg, because when you have limitless amounts of cash, yeah. and it's not like he's a, a political newbie, there are things that he can tout that he was, you know, a competent mm -hmm. mayor, he's a businessman, which is always appealing to a certain segment of voters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's going to win, but it's a problem for Biden, really. I mean, he's not going to take any voters from Bertie. But if he takes even a few from yeah, Biden, 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 that's an issue for him. That's right. And I think it depends, you know, if by when if and when Biden weakens. I mean, I've sort of been waiting for him, his candidacy to, mm -hmm. to collapse. And he seems we to all have been hold, it's holding not steady. We it's all have not going to happen. <laughs> but um, could Bloomberg push him down a little well, bit? But that's the thing about the Bloomberg phenomenon. It's like, who are these, like, professional manager? I mean, that's really what it is. I, I think mm -hmm. he probably wins, like, the professional managerial class. He's like, he's like the technocratic man ascendant himself. Mm -hmm. But, like, that's so out of step with the current moment. Right, Johnny? Yeah. That's the thing. It is. Yeah. yeah. And you that's hear like, his comments on China. They're absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, they're insane. I mean, go out right. of his way to defend, you know. Right. This man was a Republican like a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's not like a, a hot he, minute. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no, Biden no. Yeah. is like a moderate. This guy is like a right winger. It's, it's, it's his views on Iraq. He still supports the Iraq War. I mean, that's what we're talking about right. here. Right. I just well, I think it it speaks to something like people just want to beat Trump, and there's such a that's search. It. There's a search for that candidate that yeah. can do it, and it just speaks to the corrosive and horrible effect of money in politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, the fact that you can just overwhelm somebody with a message that looks pretty nice, and a low information voter will say, "Oh, that sounds okay." And, and yeah. We talk all about these debates. He hasn't even had to be on one debate <laughs> stage, doesn't want to be on one debate right. stage. Let's start New Hampshire back up there, though, mm -hmm. because this is interesting. This poll is actually good for Pete Buttigieg as well. Mm -hmm. um, he gained a bit in this one, and now you've got Elizabeth Warren tied for with Joe Biden in third. The other person who this is a, a good poll for is Amy Klobuchar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the highest 100%. that I've seen her in New Hampshire making a little bit of a move there, which again is, look, who does she share a base with? It's, it's not coming out of Bernie Sanders' numbers. It's coming out of Warren, Biden, Buttigieg, that's that pool of voters. So I think that's partly why you see Warren down there in third place. 
I mean, Will, what do you think, yeah. especially with the Buttigieg phenomenon? He's at 18 percent. I mean, Sanders, Warren could be off the trail now for three weeks uh, yeah. with the impeachment trial. And Buttigieg just scored a massive endorsement in New Hampshire. So, I mean, what does the path look like for him? Like, what, well, what, I what think, it, you look, know? there is no path if yeah. you can't win a mostly white, <laughs> yeah. wealth, you know, yeah, right. you know, state like New Hampshire yeah. where, you know, they pride themselves in their independence. So that he's got to win that state to even mm -hmm. be in the conversation after. Right. Um, I, I still struggle to articulate a path for him. I, yeah. I just think with his numbers, with the African-American community, uh, you know, his Young people numbers in New Hampshire, I think if you looked at the cross tabs of that, it was actually up a little bit. A so little bit, yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen nationally. His struggles traditionally with young people. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he goes for that base of support outside those wealthy white liberals yeah. that are supporting mm -hmm. him. So I don't know how he gets past South Carolina. Yeah. Right. Super Tuesday. Well, and he, I, I agree with you. I don't think he has a path. Um, and he doesn't, it's not just African Americans he doesn't do well with. He also right. doesn't do well with Latinos. So right. anywhere yeah. beyond like the whitest states, he's not performing well. If I mean, just comparing to the national poll, he's right. down at 6%. That's right. So I, I agree with Will, he doesn't have a path, but he could screw things up for other candidates. Right. In particular, right. I mean, yeah, if absolutely. he's won yeah. Yeah. Iowa or New Hampshire, I think that's, I, I basically think up. that's game over. That's that's, that's, you know, a real win for Biden if Pete wins yeah. any of these states. That's right. Yeah. And I think, um, no, I, I completely agree with that. And I right. think, I, I still think based on the polling that, you know, Bernie's got the shot to go, you know, one, two in Iowa and New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, but if Buttigieg gets one of those in there, I think it could really hurt the progressives. The, yeah, the other really thing would. is different with Buttigieg in that, you know, my Obama time, you know, he, Iowa, New Hampshire, all those early states helped him, helped black and Latino and other voters have confidence that he could win. Mm -hmm. It was a different thing. It was like, I think people wanted they him to be able to win, to yeah, yeah. but, right. and, and they needed to believe that he could. But there's none of that, that with Buttigieg. You're not going to get that with Buttigieg. <laughs> they don't really want him to win. See, I do get, think there is that know. for Bernie, because, you know, he's got, might, he's number could. two in South Carolina, if you look at it. The young mm -hmm. African Americans yeah. all support him already. He has the highest favorability of any of the candidates. He has very high favorability, right. so it's, I don't think he would still be able to win South Carolina because of the Biden effect, right. but, I mean, you put up 30% of the vote instead of 15%. That's not nothing, right? Add all those small donors, yeah. add the fact that he can stay in the race as long as he wants. Talk. I mean, this is going to be a convent. There's going to be some major mm -hmm. deal-making political stuff yeah, at the right. end. I, I just, it's going to be <laughs> crazy. Can okay. I ask you, um, I saw a lot of people on debate night had this thesis that Pete sort of like rhetorically tries to imitate Obama. He tries to pick up some of the cadences. <laughs> right. the, like, right. do you see, do you see that? Or are we just sort of imagining that? Uh, you know... <laughs> A little bit, and, yeah. and, and and then look, and I don't blame anybody. I think it's a good cadence. You know, I think right. it, you know it's, it's worked well, and you yeah, know, but you have to be Barack Obama. Yeah, to do, to, to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and so I, I do think he has that kind of calm, cool, collected. Like you know, let's look at look. Here's here's what's really happening. Mm -hmm. Like he does try to do it a little bit. Yeah, um, and he's got lots some Obama people on his staff. So you know, well, yeah. that's true too. That's a good point too. Maybe right. they're giving him a little coaching. On Speaking the side. of the political deal making, we're going to talk about Bloomberg next. But sit with us, guys. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back.